Today, I'm gonna to show you the best way to sharpen your portraits in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com. Now, chances are, even if you're shooting with the most beautiful new camera out there and lenses, you're gonna be amazed at how much detail you can bring to your portraits with a little bit of sharpening in post-production. So really great sharpening involves enhancing the detail that's already in your portrait. Enhance 34 to 36. Enhance 57 to 19. Different parts of your portraits have different amount of details. For instance, the eyes are relatively small and super intricate versus clothing, which is a large area and requires a different amount of sharpening. So the best way to sharpen takes all these different factors into account and allows you to sharpen on a per object basis. You guys are gonna be blown away at how much better your portraits are gonna look after this tutorial. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right down below and let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our image for today and you can download this on florin.com. Just follow the link right down below. The first thing that we wanna do is I wanna create a new layer and go to image and down to apply image. Okay, now here in apply image, we wanna choose merged and our blending mode's going to be normal. And basically this just sticks a copy of everything you see right there on the top. Now it's super important to note that when you sharpen, this should be the very last thing you do, okay? So after you've done editing your photo, doing your color and exposure adjustments, whatever, then it's time to sharpen. So using this apply image technique will basically make a copy of your entire image and it'll put it on a new layer and you're gonna use this layer to sharpen. So here's our sharpen layer. I'm gonna go ahead and double click and I'm gonna call this sharpen. Now, the first thing I wanna do is desaturate this layer. So we're gonna go to image, down to adjustments and down to desaturate because I don't want my sharpening to affect the color, only the detail. Next, we wanna turn this layer into a smart object so we can use our smart filters that can be edited at any time. So let's go ahead and click here on our layer. I'm gonna right click and go to convert to smart object. And here you can see we have our smart object icon. Next thing we're gonna do is change our layer blend mode from normal down to overlay. And of course it doesn't look right now, well, we need to apply our high pass filter. Now, what a high pass filter does is it basically enhances the light and dark detail in your photo and it leaves everything in the middle behind. So setting that to an overlay blend mode makes that middle 50% gray invisible and you're just gonna see those highlights in their shadows. And this is how we smart sharpen our photos. All right, so we've got our black and white layer here. It's set to overlay, it's a smart object. Now, the last thing we need to do is go to filter down here to other and over to high pass. So this will allow you to choose your radius, there you're gonna see, and your detail. So let's go ahead and just zoom this preview out just a little bit and go over our subject's eye so you get an idea. So any of the middle detail becomes 50% gray and only the lighter or darker areas show up. Now the key here is to adjust your radius. And as you can see, as I continue to adjust my radius, we have different levels of sharpening in our photograph. And right over here, our face starts to look way too sharpened. However, this shirt is actually looking okay. So you can see different amounts of sharpening are required for different areas of your portrait. So let's go ahead and bring this up to about eight. If you guys are following along, we're gonna bring our radius to eight and hit okay. Now, we're gonna turn this off and on. And here you can see this is a pretty good general sharpen for our image. Now, I'm gonna leave this on for our shirt, but we're gonna sharpen the face a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and create a layer mask on this layer, and I'm gonna paint with my brush tool. I'm just gonna paint black right over top of our subject's face. The reason being here is I don't wanna over sharpen areas like skin. It's gonna make the skin look like, it's basically gonna enhance any imperfections in skin. So you really don't wanna do much sharpening generally on your subject's face. All right, there we go. So by painting black on this layer mask, basically I'm telling this layer to not sharpen our subject's face. So turning this off and on, you can see we are sharpening our subject's clothing as well as our subject's hair. Now, of course, we do wanna sharpen certain areas of our subject's face, most notably their eyes, eyebrows, and their lips. 
Now, chances are this is gonna require a slightly different amount of sharpening than the rest of the photo. So it's really easy to do. From here, you just have to duplicate that sharpen layer and basically fine tune it to areas that you want to sharpen. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer, click and drag it to the new layer icon, okay? Now here on my layer mask, I'm gonna hit shift delete. We're just gonna fill this with white for just a second so I can see what we're doing here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And now remember earlier when we made this into a smart object, that gave us the ability to use a smart filter. So a smart filter can be changed at any time. So let's go ahead and double click right here on high pass. And you can see here I can change my radius for this high pass filter. There we go. And now I wanna choose something that's gonna be a little bit better for our subject's eyes. Something right about five pixels looks really nice. So let's hit okay. Now here on my layer mask, I'm gonna fill this layer mask with black. So let's hit shift delete. We're gonna go to black. There we go, which makes it invisible everywhere. And now I'm just gonna zoom in here and we're gonna paint this white just over top of my subject's eyes. All right, so painting this white basically allows just this sharpened layer to be visible over top the eyes. And we're gonna go ahead and get the eyebrows as well. There we go. And we'll get the inner parts of the eye as well. That looks really good. And I'm gonna go ahead and enhance the lips also while we're at it. And a little bit of this facial hair. Because he's got really nice facial hair. Now I wanna enhance it. Basically anywhere you wanna add more detail that's the areas that you wanna sharpen. All right, so zooming back out, let's go ahead and turn this layer off and on, and you can see we have a decent level of sharpening on his face. Now, if I were to zoom in and hold shift and disable this layer mask, you can see how it starts to sharpen his entire face, right? And all of these skin imperfections and pores, those things get enhanced. So that's why we don't wanna sharpen, for the most part, our subject's skin. We just wanna sharpen specific areas of a portrait. So now that we've dialed this in and we've sharpened the eyes, the eyebrows, and some of the facial hair, I'm gonna duplicate this layer so we can enhance our sharpening even more. So let's go ahead, we're gonna close up our previews here. There we go. And here's our sharpened layer for the eyes and the eyebrows and the facial hair. Let's just duplicate this and you're gonna see it's gonna sharpen it even more. So there's my duplicate one, and we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that another time. Now, my suggestion is instead of using one of these layers and just increasing the radius in your high pass filter, I suggest duplicating your layers because that allows you to use a small radius, but every time you duplicate it, it just enhances that sharpening over and over again. So let's go ahead and zoom out and see our image as a whole. So zooming out, we can see here's our image as a whole, and we have a few different layers of sharpening. So these layers were for the face and this layer is for the hair as well as the clothing. So hair and clothing here, and here we have our face. Now you can turn these layers off or on at any time. And if you'd like to, you can go in here, double click right here on your high pass filter, and let's go ahead and lower the radius for a couple of these just to slightly decrease our sharpening effect. There we go. Now, the nice thing about this, because we used a smart object and smart filter, is if I decide, let's see, this is the layer that we did on the clothing and the hair. If I decide to change this radius at any time, I just double click right here on the high pass filter and I can increase or decrease the amount of my radius here, which will increase or decrease the amount of sharpening. So we can see basically how it relates to the rest of the portrait. And in this case, I went ahead and decreased it just a little bit. So let's go ahead and group all of our sharpened layers and show you guys the before and after. Here's our before and the after. Go ahead and zoom in. Here's our before and the after. Guys, we're almost done. The last thing I wanna note is you wanna make sure you sharpen at the actual size that you plan on publishing your photo. So if this were a full size print, what I did just sharpening now is perfect. But if you're gonna put this on the web and it's gonna be relatively small, this amount of sharpening is gonna get shrunk down when you bring your image smaller as well. So you wanna be sure to make your image the size it's actually going to be and then do your sharpening. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to do that. All right, let's go ahead and resize this. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna to go to image and down to apply image. And I'm gonna right click on this and go ahead and just duplicate this layer to a new file. 
So you basically just have the same exact thing in a new file. Now, we're gonna go to image and down to image size, and you can see our image is pretty large. Let's go ahead and bring our width down to about 800 pixels. So let's say we're gonna put this on the web. So here at 800 pixels, Basically, we can see that our sharpening has actually lost a lot of its effect. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit F for full screen and zoom in and we can see this is actually at 100% zoom. Now you can see because we made this smaller, we can actually apply more sharpening onto this image. So let's go ahead and just do basically all the same steps we were doing before. I'm just gonna kind of use keyboard shortcuts to go through it pretty quickly. But here we can see basically, I can just apply more sharpening now to this image. So here we got, that looks pretty good for our clothing. So let's just go ahead and make this invisible for the clothing and the hair. I'm gonna paint visible on the eyes. So you can see we have quite a bit less detail here, which makes sense. We've really made our image quite a bit smaller. There we go. And we'll go ahead and do this on the hair as well. All right, so turning this off and on, we can go ahead and bring up our high pass filter just a little bit more. All right, there we go. Oh, you know what, it's a little bit too much. Let's go ahead and bring that down. I love using these smart objects because you can change that sharpening at any time. All right, so this is actually viewing our image at 100%, and you can see here we've now applying a different level of sharpening for this image at this resolution. Because your image resolution changes, your sharpening resolu resolution has to change as well. So if we just resize with the general sharpening, our image would look like this, but now sharpening after we resize, you can see we're getting a lot more detail and I'm seeing it especially in his facial hair and in his eyes. So here you can see we have our original size portrait and here we have our resize portrait ready for the web at 100%. Just remember these key things. You wanna make sharpening the very last thing you do. And if you're gonna export this out smaller sizes, be sure to go ahead and change those sizes and then do your sharpening. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna learn a lot more about Photoshop, go to flurn.com where you can find our latest pro tutorial, how to master layer styles in Photoshop. Learn how layer styles can be used to create beautiful special effects and lighting. You can place realistic text in any environment use them to color your images, and you can even create the perfect composite and more. But you can use the coupon code YouTube to save 10% on your annual subscription. You can find more information right down below. Thank you so much, I'll flirt you later. I'm gonna do one of these because I feel like it right now. <laughs> Bye guys. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. The explosion sounds are an, they're an integral part of the tutorial.